Let's have a look today at how to create an attribute file. Before we get stuck into too much detailed surface making or editing, there's no point just creating a surface if we need to keep editing it each time we go between projects or files. Now the attribute manager under options, element attributes, attribute manager allows us to edit, manage, and import or export our files between, sorry, our um, attributes, our elements, in this case let's look at surfaces between files. Now the list that we've got on our left hand side is the standard Archicad list. This is the, again, new and reset all list of what we have and there are a lot of surfaces in here. I often call them materials because that's what they used to be called. And uh, if, if you missed this in the last video, but if we want to see what surfaces we have that actually have textures applied, this is a, maybe a simpler way to look at it. You note that not all of the surfaces have textures. Only when, in this case, they've got a, a name that's called texture, that texture you'll see is a name because that's a picture that it's related to. Maybe half, but not, not all of our surfaces have textures. Now I'm going to import from a different file and then I'll show you how to export some surfaces into this file. Open. Alright, here's one. Eight, 17 to 18. AAT is the file that we're looking for, which is an attribute file, attribute manager file. Open. Here's a list of attributes, or in this case, surfaces that I had in a previous file. Now that you'll note, some of them have numbers behind them, three, four. That means it's been repeated over and over again. Now that will happen if you're not careful when you're managing textures or managing files. What I want to do in this case is reorder them by name. They could be by a number or by color, by texture. I want to use by name, and that helps me to manage them a little bit better. Now when I'm creating my own textures, I use an acronym before, in this case RMD, which is my company, Robert Mann Design. And this allows me to separate all of my edited textures from all the rest of them as I'm adding them into the file. Now you'll see here again that even some of mine I've duplicated over and over, so I don't want to repeat errors. So what I'm going to do is hold, let's see if this is going to work, no. I'm going to select some of my files, I'm going to select a few at a time, and I'm going to merge them into here by using append or add them to my list. They will generally go to the bottom of the list to begin with. I can do it a bit at a time. Or if I'm just being very lazy, which I'll be right now, I'm just going to select them all. Holding shift, that is and appends them to the file. Now again, if I change this on the left hand side to name, so this is essentially dragging and dropping from one side to the other. If I change this, we'll now see that my RMD surfaces are added into this file. Apply. Yes, that means I'm creating new surfaces. It also means I'm creating new fills because what I was describing in the last video is that our surfaces will have often an attached vectorial hatch as well as a texture and once I've done this I'm going to show you what that means in terms of textures. Create. And then finally OK. Remember to press apply or it won't work. Now I've made a few th more objects here just to see how different objects have different surfaces applied to them. When we're looking at a wall, we looked at this in the last video, a wall has a front face or a back face that might be inside or outside and it has edges which are ends, top and the bottom and therefore we can only apply three different surfaces to a wall. What about a column? Under model, a column only has one material, therefore on the outside that is and I'm not going to get into uh, core and veneers at the moment, but we can only apply one color, one surface to the entire object. What have we got next? Slabs. 
when we go to model, we see that a slab has three different types. Now this is, I guess, similar to our, unlink this, thank you, similar to our wall, but reversed in a way. Again, I like using bright colors just so they're really clear for you to see what I'm talking about. So when we're talking about a slab, we apply surfaces to a top, to sides, and to the bottom. What's next? We've got a beam. A beam is a little bit like a column if you think about it that way. It's a little bit like a slab as well. And of course it can be used that way. And we can also use it a lot like a wall and, and I'm getting to a point here. But we have a lot of different ways that we can apply surfaces to a beam which makes it for visualization purposes very, very useful. Because we can apply it to sides, top, bottom and end very, very easily. I'm not going to do all that too much. It's going to take a bit of time. Bit of variety, there we go. The only one that's duplicated in this case, sorry, the greens are too close together. Let's change that just so you can see what I'm talking about. We don't have blue yet, so let's use blue. The only thing that's duplicated that we'll see on a beam is the ends. The ends will always be the same as one another. And then we have a roof, which rounds out all the basic tools that we use. And a roof is very, very much like a slab. A roof has a top, has edges, and has a bottom. What's the difference between a, a roof, therefore, and a slab? A roof is on an angle. What am I getting at? My point is that just because a wall is a wall, a roof is a roof, it doesn't matter what the name is. When it comes to visualizing, we use the best tool available to us, which means when we're visualizing a lot of simple things, like say we're drawing furniture, we can use a slab or an element like that because a slab allows us a lot of flexibility in the modeling. In this case, we see that a beam allows us even more flexibility to apply different materials, different surfaces to the object. What's the most valuable? The morph tool is the newest tool that's been added to Archicad. We can make any object that's existing into a morph or we can create a new morph from scratch. Now this isn't the tutorial for morph, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time in it. But we can select an object such as a slab, right click, convert selections to morph. And the biggest advantage of a morph is that we can, you'll see here that looks a bit confusing, it looks like we only have one material, but what we can do with a morph is apply surfaces to every single face. And then we can edit the surfaces on every single face, which means we have the maximum potential of unlimited variation. Now, you'll note that even though this is a morph, and a morph should only have one surface, it still has inherited the attributes from the object that it was already created, the slab in this instance. So this is essentially how we apply surfaces to elements or objects in our 3D window. And we can do this through 3D, editing in 3D, changing the settings, or we can do it in 2D in any of the 2D views. The pr only problem is we can't drag and drop uh, a surface onto an object in version 18. Version 19 of ArchiCAD is just being released and we will be able to, in that instance, drag and drop, which will make it much, much more useful for visualization when we're editing our 3D model. But the same rules will apply. If it's a slab, we'll still only be able to apply the surfaces to a slab the way a slab works, and a wall, and a column, and so on. Finally, let's ha have a look at some objects. I'm going to go back to my floor plan. And I'm just going to grab a chair. Let's use this one. And objects will have their own settings for the way that we apply surfaces. And they're all very similar the way they work, but depending on the parameters, they have slightly different settings. When we go into the object, if we go to model, we see that we can actually, we only have one surface here, and what this means is we can override 
any model with this one surface. So if I unclick this tick, use object surfaces, we'll see that that whole lounge will now change to that leather texture which I've got selected. So that's an override. If we don't want to use the override, then we go into the, maybe the sofa settings, and we'll see under, depends on how we want to work this, I don't really like the new setup of custom settings and all parameters, because it means that we find surfaces in different situations or different positions, but in this case I'm going to change it to all parameters, and then generally we'll find all the surfaces under the surfaces. Again, there's only two in this case, so it's not too different frame chrome and I'll change that again to a bright color just so it stands out and we can choose any surface in our library. Now the problem that we might have is we might import an object from an external reference maybe we don't download it from Archibase. Now what will often happen is that object will bring or it will inherit its surfaces it will bring those into Archicad you might need to load them independently, but it will probably bring them in with the model. However, when we're working with surfaces, and that's what we're looking at in this video, we need to understand how the, the model is made, the surface is made, and where do we find that texture. And this is very, very important when we're starting to edit or create our own. So I'm going to use my one of my first ones here called RMD Brick Old. What's gone wrong? So we have a texture here, we have a, sorry, we have a surface here, and it says that there is a texture applied, but when I look at it, there's nothing there. Why is that? Let's have a look at internal engine. It's also saying that there's no texture applied in internal engine. So they were saying that there was a texture, and it's reading it here as RMD old brick, so you see that that's a different name to RMD brick old, but it doesn't know where to find that. Why is that? Because it's a linked texture. Now when we're using Archicad, we have the ability in our library manager to embed objects, embed textures, embed pictures, or we can link them. Now I would recommend as an advanced user of Archicad that you would definitely not want to embed them in your files, but you want to link them. So what I need to do is re-establish the link from where, in this case, my textures are. Under Add, I'm going to go to either link library, in this case this is the file here, textures that I want, and this is bringing in a folder or multiple folders. I need to refresh, and in this case I'll also reload, press OK, and now when I go back into my surfaces, we'll see that it's Relinked my texture. So this is the, the JPEG, this is the image, this is the picture that I'm talking about. And of course this looks a little bit different from the ones in Archicad because if you want to have interesting visualizations you need to create customized surfaces, that's the reality. Now whether you make that from scratch or get it from somewhere else will depend on the level of customization and the amount of time that you're going to go through in order to create your visualization. Let's now switch back to Cine Render, and we'll see that it's not currently being listed here. So how can we, we can fix that? We could say match settings, so we could do it like before and say Cine Render to match from internal. And with one click it will bring my texture into the Cine Render library. Now that's not a bad way of working and what I'll generally do when I am creating it a custom surface is to first create it in internal, import it into Cine Render, and then once I'm in Cine Render, start to edit it. But if I didn't do that, how would I go about creating in Cine Render my surface? We have multiple different ways to do that, and this is where it does become complicated. We have color here. Under color, what we want to choose is image. You see that I've just deleted it because I'm now going to re edit it, and I now need to search. For where that's coming from, file name, textures, not in alphabetical order, that's a bit silly, bricks, RMD old brick, 
So you see that it's, it's similar. It's a similar process. I'm not going to get into much more of the details of the other elements of editing a surface at the moment, but we can import it either through our Cine render settings or through our internal engine settings. Of course, we have the same size here and we can edit those and then that will change how that works. What we need to be very, very aware of is the scaling. Some surfaces, it doesn't really matter what scale we place them at, but something like brick is very, very important because a brick has an actual size. People know what that is. A brick is what? 760, sorry, 76 millimeters by 230 by 110. And if it doesn't look right on our model, let's see what I mean by that. Let's grab our wall. And we're going to apply our bricks to it. RMD brick hold. If our bricks don't wrap properly around a wall, if there's issues with how it works, then we're going to notice that. The scale will be obvious. Now we have a problem with this surface. This texture hasn't been made perfectly. It's not perfectly tiling and we're going to have a look at how to fix that next in the next video which we're going to look at custom creation of surfaces this requires a bit of Photoshop work sometimes unless we're using a better material to begin with